I'm Lou Brutus. Always a pleasure to welcome my next guest, an old friend whom you know from his many years with Stone Sour, but these days he is working on his latest project, which is in fact The Life Project. Let's say hello to Josh Rand. Josh, how are you with the rock and roll in the dog sitting? Um, it's rocking, Lou. <laughs> That's all I got to say. We're moving forward. Speaking of the dog, you just woke up. Well, the good. <laughs> Yeah, and I brought the dog up just in case you might have dog stuff to do during the course of this interview. So I wanted to explain it before we got rolling. Yeah, well, it looks like I'm going to be petting the dog the entire interview because, uh, well, she's she's very needy. <laughs> well, as as all good dogs are, we are actually on this earth to take care of the pups. That that should be our main thing. Yes, yeah. definitely. And I'm sure the dog agrees too. So first of all, before we dive into uh, to specific music from the band, to those who are unfamiliar with the Life Project, get, give them like the thumbnail brief description of you and the group. Well, I mean, in a sense, it was just something that I started doing a couple of years ago, um, just writing music myself. And then I just decided um, I wanted to get a female vocalist, basically, to work on these songs and sing on them. And I found Cassandra through uh, a mutual friend, actually Stone Sour's uh, a &R person, Dave Rath. And we hit it off. And then we just have been working on stuff for the last two years, kind of just here and there, you know, obviously with COVID and all that stuff going on in the world, it's, you know, really restricted going out. So there's really not been a desire to do that up until recently. So now we're going to end up being... Uh, a full band and actually play our first show April 30th in Springfield, Missouri, um, which I'm really excited about finally getting back out there because for me, it's been a, a, a bit, I guess, like three years <laughs> since I've been on the stage or over. Um, so yeah, so that's really what it what it's about. It's just me musically trying different stuff, but also getting back to where I originally came from you know, as far as my musical journey. Um, so it's kind of getting back to my roots and um, yeah, and, and just having fun with it. You know, I, you know, obviously we're going to talk about the, the cover EP, which is a really love passion project for me. And I'm sure we'll dig into it, but yeah, that's what the life project is for me. It's just, it's a different vehicle to express myself, I guess, artistically with, you know, no, truly no boundaries. But um, but leaning more towards of me musically, I think coming at it as a uh, an educated teenager. And what I mean by that is it's like the fire of that teenager that want that drive that style of music that I was playing 30 years ago, but now doing it with the experience, the knowledge, and all that. So it's kind of like, like I said, it's like revisiting um, the past in a way, or going home in some ways. Well, again, the cover song EP you referred to is Big Four, and it's got covers of the Big Four. So, so give me first an overview uh, of the EP and the timeline of the recording and the creation of the songs. Well, the idea I've had for quite a while, actually, like 15 years, probably. Um, and the timeline for it was, is, you know, because of COVID and all that, I just felt like for us being a, a young band, I didn't want to just kind of start basically throwing a bunch of originals out there if we couldn't support it or do really anything with it. And uh, just so we were moving forward um, as we work on that stuff and hold off on that stuff, I mean, uh, it'll come out later on this year. Um, I just started messing around with the big four idea again. And I was just like, what got it started was each four of these songs uh, really mean something to me at some point in my musical journey or career. Um, for instance, one was the very, the intro of it was the very first piece of music I learned how to play guitar. So, um, or uh, Cotton Amash, the bass line, my parents probably to this day can still hum you that <laughs> bass line. I probably played that bass line so much as a, as a teenager. Um, and so on and drums with symphony. So it was like going back, but what I really enjoyed about it was now I have the skill set to be able to like play all of it. 
you know, when I was just starting out playing you know, 15 years old, trying to play one, it's like, okay, cool. I got the, the first couple of bars and then there's no way I, I, I could play it back then. So um, it was still challenging some of the parts throughout the four songs, but um, like I said, it was like going home. It was so weird to go back and really dig into these songs and learn them and record them. And then we just did them at my place, you know, and it was just done over last fall, basically, um, loosely. And uh, yeah, it was awesome to do it. Well, let's let's look at uh, a couple of the individual tracks first, Caught in a Mosh. Um, what is it about that song that makes it stand out from everything else in the genre? Um, for me, with that song, the main thing is the bass guitar. It really is. Frankie just has a specific style, the way he attacks his tone, along with um, Charlie's drumming. Like every every aspect of that band, uh, and especially from that record, you know, to me, that record is, you read anything about me and the, you know, obviously what's your five favorite records and blah, blah, blah. Over the last 20 years, that record, I, I guarantee, I promise you, is always on my list because I was even telling Frankie the other day that since probably 88, because I didn't, I wasn't into Anthrax when that album would have initially dropped in 87. I was probably like a year later. Um, I've always had that record in my possession, period. Whether it's been on cassette, vinyl, CD. Um, I will go on a limb, and I've said this before in the past, out of those records that it gets lumped into from 86, even though it came out in 87, for me, it's probably my favorite. And that's a pretty big statement. That's how much I love that record. I don't, I, there's not a bad song on that record. Obviously, the other three records I'm talking about are Peace Sales, Master of Puppets, and Rain and Blood, um, which are all masterpieces in their own right. But for me, it's just there's a different vibe with Anthrax and an energy, like it's a positive energy. You know what I'm saying? Like it's, I don't know, it's just, it's got a bounce to it. There's a, always a groove with them that I feel like the other three bands um, respectfully don't have. Slayer does sometimes because of Lombardo's drumming and the style that he plays with. But I don't know, there's just, like I said, I've always gravitated towards them uh, in the sense of just this, fun energy that they create even though the music's heavy and by the way you had an anthrax member do the artwork for the single as well tell me about it yeah that was cool um well being a diehard fan you know i knew that charlie had worked on the artwork in the past for the band and is still heavily involved yeah, yeah um and i thought well you know what i'm just gonna ask him what can he do he can tell me no i'm whatever you know i totally understand so i reached out to charlie i was like hey you know i did this cover of cotton amash and i said the same thing i was like i know that you're always either you've done the artwork or you're heavily involved in it is there any way that you would do the artwork for the single for this and he's like absolutely as, as long as you don't need it like in a couple of days and i was like no i Whenever I'll push the date back. That's literally what I told him. I was like, if you're actually going to do this, if I have to, I will move the date. And, uh, but, uh, yeah, and he did it and it's, it's awesome. And, uh, I'm still kind of shocked that he did it to be quite honest. It's like, cause we go back to me being like a kid. So it's like, I wish I could tell the 15 year old that's, you know, playing bass, trying to play cotton and mosh, like, you're not going to believe this, but like, Decades later, Charlie's actually going to do the artwork for this and you're going to record and put out this song. Um, so this whole project, like I said, it's a love passion project and um, to have stuff like that happen. Um, it's just been kind of surreal for me. I mean, I have like a big four room in my house. I mean, just <laughs> saying. Uh, so, you know, this, this you're, project. You're a you're a degenerate fan. That's right. And I include my, <laughs> myself with a lot of groups. Like I, I just call them degenerate fans, you know? Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, to me, it's still, I just hope people enjoy it and realize what it is that I tried to set out to do with it, which honestly was just to go back to my roots and uh, also see if I could play all of it. <laughs> so, uh, you know, and it was a blast. 
quick quick aside about the anthrax guys and and i've you know been lucky enough to do tons of stuff with them for longer than you know the band or i would care to admit um the only bad thing that's ever happened with them for me is we sometimes get sidetracked and we start talking about kiss and i know you're oh. a big kiss fan do you, do you ever get you ever get in deep kiss conversations with the anthrax guys because they can go for hours oh that well band. i feel like Obviously, you you know and have heard some of these stories. I feel like they need to tell them. I'm not going to tell their stories. Um, yeah. But yes, they've shared more than many Kiss stories that have been amazing. You know, uh, obviously, you know, with Frankie around the band as as a kid himself, and all this the stuff that him and his buddies used to do to like sneak into concerts into the <laughs> studio and stuff. It's like just so crazy that they were able to do that, you know, but um, yeah, those guys are amazing. Um, not only as musicians, but as people. Yeah. Yeah. They're all good guys and, and fun to be around. Now, one of the other real standout tracks on the EP is the cover of one from Metallica. Uh, you've already spoken a little bit about the importance of that tune to you. Um, just a quick technical aside. How did you create the combat, sound effects at the very beginning and i'm uh, going to admit I, I i still want to i haven't done it yet i wanted to speak to you first i have not done a, a sort of taster's choice comparison of the two side by side but how did you create it um i just pulled a bunch of samples honestly of of you know machine gun fire bombs helicopter i just like went to a sample library and i was just picking out uh certain one, sections or pieces of these audio samples and then i just kind of built my own thing and then you know with the with the bombs or landmines the the true audio for that there's no low end so what i ended up doing is just adding 808 hits um in those to give that that low end burst because i didn't realize that until after i started researching all this pulling up audios i'm like Where's the like the boom? There's like, yeah, there's this, there's a hit there, but there's no, there's no like low end from it. Um, but that's how I did it. I just went through a bunch of samples one day and then just kind of constructed it. I knew briefly, or, you know, I could remember how the, the original is because I've heard the song one billion times and uh, I just went for it. So T tell me about taking the rest of the song. I, I think one of the secret weapons here for this song specifically, but also in general for the life project is the fact you've got Cassandra doing the vocals and it, it just her being a woman brings something fresh to this that uh, I, I don't think you could get with any guy singing it. Absolutely. I mean, that was, you know, we talked about that last year with the life project and yeah. me, why, why I brought Cassandra in or female vocalist was, I just felt like, um, obviously the comparison between both bands that I'm in and um, I didn't want that. And I just thought it brought a different element and her vocal style I felt was with my writing style would be unique. And I think that everybody will really hear, we've really come into our own over the last six months uh, as far as the originals, like I said, that will be out later on this year. Um, so in, in going into these covers, uh, a cool thing for her was she really, she never had heard a Slayer song or an Anthrax song before this project. Poor um, kid. Yeah. Um, so, and one of the reasons why we did Symphony is because that is the only Megadeth song that she knew. Uh, one for me, I chose with the simple idea of, uh, it's an epic song. Like I said, it goes back to where I started. And to my knowledge, it hasn't been covered with the exception of Korn briefly doing it for MTV icons. And yeah, they only yeah. play like three and a half minutes of, of the track. So uh, I, that song took me five days to record all the music too. I'll be honest. I'm my own worst critic. It was like, let's try this guitar. Let's try that guitar holy crap, it's that symbol hit there. Um, I went far and beyond for that song. I mean, everybody knows it's my favorite band. Um, so for me, it was like, it had to be perfect <laughs> uh, in my mind. And going back to her, 
the beauty with her, because she wasn't familiar with these, is I just told her to be herself. I'm like, here's the lyrics, make it your own. And I think with Slayer is the one that really stands out the most of her making it her own. Um, but yeah, I just was like, just be you. You're not going to be those four guys. I mean, so, and I think that also stands out in, in these four tracks of just, you have my love of what we're doing, but then there's that new fresh sense because it's just her singing it. Like you said, it's a female voice and she's not trying maybe with the guy, if it was a male vocal, maybe they would try to copy those guys, you know, and she doesn't, it's like, well, she's not going to scream like, you know, Tom Araya, and she's not going to have that nasally angry voice like Dave Mustang, you know? So, um, yeah, I'm totally stoked with how she, her performance on these recordings. Mm -hmm. 